All right. Well, thank you all for joining me. I'm going to take today to explain traditional contributions versus Roth contributions and and the impact of both. Again, I'm Jenny Leroy with Cutler Investment Group. And if anybody has questions throughout the presentation, feel free to um, ask away. So first of all, the, the difference between traditional and Roth mostly stems around taxes. So for your contributions, Roth contributions are made after taxes and traditional contributions are made before taxes. And then when those contributions are withdrawn in retirement, Roth contributions are not taxed. The growth of that account is not taxed as well. And then traditional contributions, you pay your taxes when you take those withdrawals in retirement. Pretty straightforward, but I'll get more into the difference between these um, as we continue. So some similarities between a traditional account um, and a Roth is no matter which type of contribution you are doing, you enjoy the convenience of having that contribution drafted directly out of your paycheck. So there's no difference of um, whether it's Roth or traditional, it still comes right from your paycheck. And both the traditional and Roth include the company match. So there's whether you're doing Roth or traditional, there's no difference there. When the company provides a match, that's always going to be traditional because the company cannot pay your taxes for you. And then both types have the same contribution limits. So for 2019, that contribution limit is 19,000. And if you're over 50, you have an additional 6,000 that you can contribute um, to that. I wanted to highlight that point because with a Roth IRA, the contribution limit is, um, is, is dependent based on your income level. So there's a lot more restrictions on a Roth IRA, but within a 401k account, whether you're doing Roth or traditional, your income does not matter for that contribution limit. So I wanted to make sure to highlight that point there. How are they different? Uh, the biggest difference between the Roth contributions is, is how they're taxed. With a Roth contribution, your money goes in after tax, as I mentioned, and then that means you're paying your taxes now, taking home a little less in each paycheck. Um, when you make your traditional contribution, your contributions are pre-tax, uh, meaning they're taken out off the top of your gross earnings before your paycheck has been taxed, which means your taxable income has the potential to be lower and we'll get more into tax specifics here in, in the next few slides. So again, this chart kind of just highlights the difference. Um, with Roth contributions, are they tax deductible? No. Are they tax withdrawal? No. Um, early withdrawal penalty um, is only applicable to earnings because you've already paid taxes and the contribution limit is 19000 with the additional 6000 and loans are allowed on your Roth contribution, so there's no difference between those two um, with loans. And then on traditional contributions, they are tax deductible, which has that potential to lower your taxable income. They are taxed at your withdrawal, and there is an early withdrawal penalty before age 59 and a half on all of it. Um, because you haven't paid those taxes, and the contribution limit is the same, that 19000 plus 6000 if you're over 50, and the loans are allowed. So this chart kind of just summarized the, the previous slides in a, in a nice format to view that comparison between the two. So with that, I get the question, most common is which one should I choose? Um, well, it really depends if you want to pay your taxes now or later. Um, as a general rule of thumb, if your current tax bracket is higher than you expect it to be in retirement, then you should consider pre-tax contributions or traditional contributions. If your current tax bracket is the same or lower than you expect it to be in retirement, uh, maybe you're starting out your career, um, then you should consider contributing after-tax dollars or into a Roth account. Now that's a very generalization, but um, that's kind of a starting point on, um, on, on where you should start. The hardest part about this is 
nobody knows what taxes are going to be in the future. So, so there definitely is some, some personal assumptions that need to go into this decision. Now, I talk a lot about tax rates, so I wanted to take a minute to go through um, the federal tax bracket just so people have an idea about <laughs> kind of what I'm talking about here. And one thing I wanted to emphasize, and we're just going to look at single um, for this example. So if you are single, we're looking at these tax rates here. So if you make $45,000, you fall into a 22% tax bracket. So on that note, you're, you're what I like to refer to as on the cusp. You're kind of right in between two tax brackets. So if you were to make a traditional contribution to your 401k in the amount of $7,000, you just dropped your taxable income from $45,000 to $38,000, dropping you from a 22% tax bracket to a 12% tax bracket. So that's the example of um, kind of w when I talk about being on the cusp, does it really matter? You know, if you take, take your contributions into consideration, you have that potential of lowering your taxable income. Now, on that same note, if your taxable income is $80,000 and you contribute $5,000, you're still in the 22% tax bracket, but you're going to pay 22% taxes on $75,000 versus paying 22% taxes on $80,000. So it still helps you, um, but it doesn't drop you into a lower tax bracket, if that makes sense. Um, again, that's that's one of the benefits of the traditional pre-tax contributions is it, in fact, uh, it affects your taxable income in this sense. Now, obviously, this chart has married um, head of household or married filing separately, so you could kind of refer back to this um, if you wanted to find your specifics on where you fall. So again, one of the most common questions I get is, what is my tax bracket? And, and I can't answer that for you because it depends on your income, if you're married, your spouse's income, and how you file. Um, but this chart um, is useful. And again, this just covers your federal tax bracket. So on top of that, there's also state taxes to consider as well. But I hope that's helpful. This next slide here, I have an example for you. So this example is if there was no changes in taxes. The taxes you're paying today are the same as in retirement. In this example, both traditional and Roth, you put $10,000 into your account. Uh, the tax rate now in the traditional is zero because you're not paying your taxes. In the Roth example, you pay your 20% taxes today. The after-tax investment in the traditional is 10000 In the Roth example, it's 8000 because the 20% taxes were paid today. Um, if there's a 100% return, the pre-tax gain is 10000 in the traditional, 8000 in the Roth. When you take it out from the traditional in retirement, you have that 20% taxes. You have no taxes in the Roth. The after-tax take-home is 16000 in both of these examples because taxes remained the same. So um, if... If there was no change in taxes, the difference between traditional and Roth, there's not really a benefit to it. Now, assuming taxes go up, which historically taxes tend to go up, you'll see here um, the benefit of the Roth. So in this example, again, you put 10000 in the traditional and the Roth. You pay your taxes today at that 20% in the Roth. You invest 8000 10,000 in the traditional, the pre-tax, you have 100% return. You've got 10,000 in the traditional, 8,000 in the Roth. You have to pay 30% taxes in the traditional when you take that money out. You now have $14,000 after tax. In the Roth example, you still maintain your 16,000 because you paid your taxes in the beginning. So I hope, I hope that... Um, kind of helps emphasize uh, the, the difference if, if taxes do go up in the future, the benefit of paying those beforehand really does have a good impact on you paying those earlier to benefit you.
Now, again, if anybody has questions, feel free to shoot them out. So a quick little recap on everything I covered. Um, Roth contributions are good because if taxes go up, your savings will be worth more in retirement. Just emphasize on that last example that I showed you guys. And as every, everybody knows, um, we don't know what tax rates will do in the future. Um, it's not a bad thing to have a Roth and a traditional account. You can split your contributions between both so that you're hedging a little. Um, you've got a little bit of money in your pre-tax and a little bit in post-tax. Keep in mind that everything the company contributes towards the account will be pre-tax. So if you were doing Roth, you would already have kind of two separate buckets addressing that. And if the less you earn now, the better it is to contribute to Roth. Going back to that example of when I um, outlined that if you're in a lower tax bracket, it makes more sense to do Roth if you think your tax brackets will increase in the future. And of course, the more you earn, the more you want to transition to traditional accounts over time when you're in a higher tax bracket. Now, once you've made your contribution election, you don't want to just sit back and keep it on that for the rest of the time the account is live. Um, most importantly, because your salary changes or your earnings change or your tax situation change or the tax laws in general change. So it's something that you, that you do want to continue to pay attention to over time um, because, yeah, those changes from year to year, it's really essential that you're reviewing your account, the performance, and alternatives that may better suit you. It may have made sense to make a Roth contribution when you first opened the account um, and you're, you were starting out your career, but five years down the road, maybe you've been promoted and your salary has increased significantly and you've increased a higher tax tax bracket, you may really want to consider at that point switching from your Roth contributions to traditional. It is something that you can change at any point in time, just like you can change your contributions up and down. You can switch from traditional and Roth at any point in time as well. Um, so there's definitely um, it's not something that we set and leave it as is forever. It's something that you need to continue to monitor over time. Now, I really hope that gives everybody a better grasp on the difference between traditional and Roth, also referred to as pre-tax and after-tax. Um, that is it in a nutshell. Uh, if, I, if I talk to you guys any more about taxes, I might have everybody uh, snoozing on us here. But um, I wanted to open it up and see if anybody had any further questions that I could address. Okay, well, I definitely understand some. So, what was that, Carol? We're going to go around the room real quick and see if we can get some questions for you. One second. Okay, perfect. <laughs> 